a blessed new moon, first day of the month of Sivan, which is the third month of the year. Imagine God's year is on the number three. While in the world we are beginning uh, tomorrow, beginning number six. So you see, when you keep up with God's calendar, you won't be lost. Blessed new moon to you all. I would like to welcome you to this Sabbath, which comes on a Tuesday. Today, Tuesday, it is the 31st of May, but it is the first day of the third month in heaven. As we all know, in the third month, which is the month of Sivan, that's the month full of the blessings of the Pentecost. Come Sunday, this following Sunday, that's the day of Pentecost. You and I should keep that as a feast. We should be amazed to say when God says in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16, three times a year, we should keep that feast in Jerusalem. He means it. Why? You, if you see the other two feasts, the Passover has got all eight days, and then the Tabernacle, eight days. So many days are within that feast. But the Pentecost has got only one day, meaning it's got all the blessings that you may get on the eight days of Tabernacle, but you all get them in one day. So it's a most important feast ever. That's why if you go to the class object lessons, Christ was inaugurated on that day. He was not enthroned on the Passover. He was not enthroned on the Tabernacle. He was enthroned on the Pentecost. So it means when we see in future, the 144,000 standing on Mount Zion on the day of Pentecost. So what does it suggest to you and me? That's a feast for the workers. Mm -hmm. That's why Christ himself was enthroned on a feast of workers, which is the Pentecost. It's, it's on Christ's object lesson, page 118. It clearly shows that that feast it has got all the properties of crowning the workers. Per adventure, let's read just that. Christ object lessons on page 118. You find that he was enthroned on the day of Pentecost. On the Passover, he was he was killed, died on the cross on the Passover. And on the Pentecost, he was enthroned. And then when we are told in his coming to collect the whole harvest. It will be on the tabernacle. That's why we are admonished to keep those three feasts. They are full of harvests. The, the harvest pertaining to workers is on the day of Pentecost. So all people who claim they are working for God should be found keeping that Pentecost, that day of Pentecost, so that God crowns them for future workers. And we will see when the kingdom is established, the 144,000 will be fully on duty, being sent all over the world to collect the full harvest to the kingdom. So when you keep the feast, you have the full plan of salvation. Without these feasts, the full plan of salvation is not opened to you. Let's, let's read from Christ's object lessons. Page 118, yeah. Mm -hmm. But after Christ's ascension, his, sorry, but after Christ's ascension, his enthronement in his meditorial kingdom was signalized by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Right. On the, right, please. On mm -hmm. the day of Pentecost, the Spirit was given. So we, we are told by that scripture that the enthronement of Christ 
was on the day of Pentecost. And even the, 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 the Holy Spirit was poured to the believers on the day of Pentecost. He was enthroned. He was established in the Mediterranean Kingdom. And all those who are going to work in this kingdom, the Mediterranean Kingdom, which Christ has workers working for the kingdom, are enthroned, are imbued with the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So you see how important that day is. Mm. It is particularly the day of Pentecost. Though we have three feasts, which are major feasts, but he chose the day of Pentecost for the workers. So it was just for you to recap the importance of the day which comes in future to us, which is on Sunday this week. On the 5th of June, it is the day of Pentecost. Right. Going back to our topic, which is the two covenants, mm. we say it's going to be a series of these uh, topics of the two covenants, and we know today is part three. So we, we left on Sabbath, where we have been talking about this covenant, the covenant which was given to Israel. And we have seen that even when the covenant was given to Israel, this covenant, this name Israel, was not even given to Adam, was not given to Noah, even to Abraham himself. We see this name Israel was given to Jacob. But we are seeing the future covenant in Hebrews chapter 8. It tells us that this future covenant, which is the new covenant, is also established to Israel. Then we saw how Israel becomes, comes out from the Gentiles, from the Christians. We saw that Israel comes because of adoption which we have been told by Romans chapter 9, verse 4 to 5, it says, we are the children of adoption. And that's where we discover that even when Isaac had a child called Jacob, he was adopted by being given a name, Israel. You know exactly how he obtained that name, Israel, from Jacob. And that name is not his name. It came from God. So God has also in the future, in the Gentile world, in the spiritual Israel, adopted other children. We saw in Galatians chapter 3 verse 29 that if ye be Christ, you are Abraham's seed. Mm -hmm. And that's how we adopt being spiritual Israel. So we are seeing these new children which he adopts, are uh, under the covenant, the second covenant. So that's why we have to study both the first covenant and the second covenant. Peradventure, you might think that the second covenant has nothing to do with the prophets, has nothing to do with the law, has nothing to do with the statutes. No, we find Elijah in Malachi chapter 4, verse 4 to 5, being ordained now to preach the statutes and judgments to combine with the uh, commandments and the testimonies that we are practicing. So you can see how God is so organized. Both in the first covenant being given to Israel by flesh, and also the second command, uh, covenant being given to Israel by spirit. Hmm. But still the same laws. They go. They have not been given. We can see churches practicing with only commandments, without the statutes, because he assigned Elijah the prophet of the last time before the great and dreadful day. So as we see the progression of the new covenant already being given to Elijah to come. Why Elijah? Because no one is keeping those statutes. No one is keeping those festivals in the church. So they have to come with Elijah so that we have the full covenant of God which was given to Moses and now given to Elijah so that we all keep the commandments, the testimonies, 
the statutes and the judgments. So let's let's see whether in Nehemiah, go to the Bible, in Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 13, is it truly these four laws which were given before he gave the animals? These four laws have nothing to do with the animal sacrifice. These are his laws. That's why we find even the new moon being kept in the new heaven and new earth. The, the new moons are the festivals. They are under the word festival. So if you are keeping the Sabbath without the new moon, you have to think twice because you need to belong to the second covenant. Now let's let's go to the verse I gave, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 13. Is it what Moses was given on Mount Sinai? Mm -hmm. Thou camest down right. also upon Mount Sinai, Right. And spakest with them from heaven, mm -hmm. and gavest them right judgments, right. and true laws, mm -hmm. good statutes, mm -hmm. and commandments. Right. Do you see, <clears throat> there are four laws. Yes. And the important laws, uh, is the important law is the commandment. God had to make sure it is guarded by the statutes. That's why when we give, gave you... The, the text to show that these precepts or the statutes, they guard the Ten Commandments so that they make you not backslide. God knows we backslide if we keep the Ten Commandments without the statutes. So people have opted to make religions of Ten Commandments only without the statutes. So that's why they, 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 they ever so ever go back and backslide and go back to the river Jordan, they are baptized, re-baptism, re-baptism, until I don't know, because they are not keeping the festival. Because the festivals are the statutes which were given to guard the decalogue, or to guard the, the, the peradventure. We need that scripture which shows that these precepts were given to guard the Decalogue. So if you find that if you are keeping the Ten Commandments with these statutes, right? Give me, are you on? Yeah. Which, one, which text is that? 1 BC. 1 yeah. BC? 1104. 1104. We want to see these statutes. These statutes are the precepts which God gave so that the Ten Commandments are clearly kept. Read on, let's hear. Mm -hmm. In consequence mm -hmm. of continual transgression, right. the moral law was repeated in awful grandeur from Sinai. Mm -hmm. Christ gave to Moses religious precepts mm -hmm. which were to govern everyday life. So why did he give those? Because of continual backsliding. So that's why God did not only give the Ten Commandments without the statutes, which are the festivals. He knows if you just keep the Ten Commandments without the festivals, you will continuously backslide. So in order for you, he gave these precepts. Listen to that. Yeah? These statutes mm -hmm. were explicitly given mm -hmm. to guard the Ten Commandments. They were given to guard the Ten Commandments or the Decalogue. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. They were not shadowy types to pass away with the death of Christ. They don't pass away at the cross, like many say. Don't listen to people who lie to you to tell you that these festivals were nailed to the cross. The whole world will be full of the glory of God. What does God mean? The whole world will be full of these festivals. Only those who do not want to obey God will stay without because they were given to guard the Ten Commandments. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. They were to be binding upon man in every age, as long as time should last. Right? They were not shadowy types. That's the sentence I'm looking for. Listen to that. They were not shadowy types mm -hmm. to pass away with the death of so Christ. So just to hear brethren telling you that these were shadows, just remember, Christ has warned us that there will be Wolves coming in sheep clothing to deceive you. When Sister White clearly says these were not shadows, it's true. 
they don't pass away with the death of Christ. That's why when Christ ascended to heaven, we saw him being enthroned in the meditorial kingdom on that day of Pentecost. It's a festival. So if they tell you these were nailed to the cross, there's no consistency. Because why is Christ being enthroned on one of the feasts? After the cross. Yeah. So you can prove that's a lie. So I'm telling you that these were not shadowy types. Coming from the book 1 BC 1104. Clear. To the law and to the testimony. That's all you need. You don't need another interpreter. You need the Bible and the spirit of prophets to tell you that these laws, these festivals, are not shadows. Don't call them shadows when Sister Wayne says they are not shadowy types to pass away with the death of Christ. They are binding as long as life should last. For men to keep the commandments with these precepts, Making sure you don't backslide. Now listen to that. Let's see, let's hear more. Yeah. Um, when you were reading, you saw that these statutes, judgments, commandments, testimonies, four laws which came on Mount Sinai. Of course, God knows we are not keeping most of them except the Ten Commandments. That's why in Malachi chapter 4, go to Malachi chapter 4, verse 4 to 5, before the great and dreadful day, he sends a messenger with Elijah to give these other ones that we are ignoring. And of course, when Elijah preaches, we are told we'll go through all these antagonists mm. who will antagonize the message of God. Now read, read Malachi chapter 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember ye mm -hmm. the law of Moses my servant, right. which I commanded unto him mm -hmm. in Horeb for all Israel, right. with the statutes and the judgments. Right. Behold, mm -hmm. I will send you Elijah the prophet right. before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Right. So we are told in Genesis chapter uh, 18, mm -hmm. Go to Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. That's the major reason why God selected Abraham. Because we are seeing, we are seeing from that text, mm. God has promised that there is a messenger who is going to bring the statutes and judgments which have been omitted by the religious world. Mm. So Elijah will bring these two to combine with the commandments and the testimonies, so that we still got four laws. But in the first covenant, we saw God then, he did not call Israel to Adam, he did not call Israel, um, he, he, the name of Israel was not given to Noah. Why? We, we saw when we were studying, these, in the first time, they were still the, the, the deluge, mm -hmm. or the, the flood coming to destroy the world. So what will happen to the name of Israel? People were still going to backslide. Only eight were saved. So God saw that. And he did not even give Noah. He had to give the descendant of Abraham. And we saw it is Jacob. But he picked, for him to have Jacob, he picked Abraham from the heir, heir of the Chaldeans. Why? He was not keeping all these laws. But... He picked Abraham because of one reason. That's why he had to follow his children when they went into Egypt to take them out, to cross the Red Sea, to go back to, to Canaan. Why did he pick Abraham? Why did he give that favor to Abraham? Now let's read from Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. <laughs> For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. Right. And they shall keep the way of the Lord mm -hmm. to do justice mm -hmm. and judgment, mm -hmm. that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Why did he pick him? But if that verse starts with, for I know he will command his children. Yeah. But what was the verse before that? 
go to the to the yeah. Bible. The verse before that, Genesis chapter eighteen, verse verse eighteen. Verse eighteen. Yeah. What does it say? Seeing that Abraham mm -hmm. shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Do you see God has already seen a great and a mighty person mm. who is Abraham before he started keeping all these statues. Before he was in Canaan, there was no land called Israel at that time. The land was called Canaan. So he saw that he's going to be a mighty person. This is the reason he picked him. He saw God has got his full knowledge to see that this one, if I give him the statutes and the judgments, he will keep them. And he will also command his household. And not only household, all his servants. All the people who come next to him, he's going to command them. God saw that he's going to be, he had that capability of being a mighty, mighty nation. Now, he says, for I saw, uh, chapter, eight, uh, chapter 18, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Seeing that Abraham yes. shall surely become a great and mighty nation, mm -hmm. and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Why? Why is he going to be a mighty nation? Next For verse. I know him. Because. Listen. I know him mm -hmm. that he will command his children and his household after him. And because then... he's going to do that. Yeah. He's going to command his children on the laws of God. In God's way. When God says, learn of his way. Which way is that? I have seen so many parents say, my children listen to me. I said, that is if you are doing God's way. But if they listen to you in doing Wrongly. ways against God, yeah. you are making those children cursed. But if they listen to you in doing God's way, then you are going to be blessed. So many parents once want their children to listen to them. That is depending on that, you will introduce God's ways to your children. If they don't follow God's ways, they will never be blessed. If you want your children to be blessed like Abraham, command them in God's way. But we want to see which one then is God. Is God what is it that God was saying God's way? What is it that Abraham was keeping? If you go to Genesis chapter uh, 26, verse 5, you will find that is the same covenant way. And same statutes, the commandments, the, all that were there in the Mount of Sinai being given as a first covenant to Moses. But what? let's find out from the verse. What is it that God was happy about this man as a friend? And because him a friend, he knew. It was not because he looked uh, nice or he looked beautiful, handsome or something. He, it was not that. Mm -hmm. There is something that God saw him that proved that he is a friend of God. Yeah. That, that's what we are being told. Even James testifies, Abraham was a friend of God. What is it that God favored Abraham with? Listen to that. Genesis chapter 26 verse 5. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because that Abraham mm -hmm. obeyed my voice. What did he obey? Listen to that. And kept my charge. What is it? My commandments. What? My statutes. Two. And my laws. Do you see? He, he kept the commandments, the festivals, which are the statutes, and all the laws which were coming from the first covenant. Though he was not an Israelite under Moses, Moses came later in the Israelite history. But Abraham was not an Israelite. He was God's friend. When you call Abraham, you don't call him and say Israel. Mm -hmm. He is not Israel. He was called God's friend. That's his title. But how? For I know he, will, he kept my charge. What is God's charge? The statues. The commandments, all the laws which were coming from Mount Sinai to Moses, this is God's charge. You can't keep the commandments without the statutes. That one is not God's charge. It's not God's way. Keeping half the law and not keeping all 
It's not God's way. Abraham kept, kept all of it. That law which came on Mount Sinai did have four laws. Then we find God coming with a friend in before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That's Elijah. In Malachi chapter 4, verse 4 to 5, it says, Remember then yes. that law which Abraham kept, which Moses kept, which all the children who were favored by God in the Bible kept. Remember it. Of the statutes and judgments. I will send Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. What do you, what will Elijah do? Go to Malachi chapter 4, verse 4 to 5. Let's hear it properly from the Bible. Right? Uh -huh. Remember ye mm -hmm. the law of Moses, my servant, right. which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, right. with the statutes and the judgments. You see those feasts are coming. Before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Listen to that. Next verse. Behold, mm -hmm. I will send you Elijah the prophet mm -hmm. before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Right. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. So that law which Elijah is given from Mount Horeb will turn the hearts of the fathers. To the children. So, what are these children being called at the time they are keeping the statutes and the judgments together with those other two which we are accepting generally? What are they called? They are called God's friends, like Abraham. They are now keeping God's charge. They are now keeping the way which God caused Abraham to be called God's friend. That's where he was happy with Abraham. He knew Abraham was going to, he was keeping God's charge. And he knew he was also going to command his household in God's way of keeping festivals. Yeah? You tell, you, you tell me your children, they keep your way when you are not introducing them to Abraham's way of keeping the festivals. Yeah? That's why we are told clearly even by Isaiah. Isaiah will tell you, uh, Isaiah chapter, uh, I think it's chapter 40, verse 15, 51, or somewhere, play around with those verses. It says, learn, learn, learn from the rock. Hmm. The rock where you are hewn, which is Abraham. He says, learn from the hole. The hole where you are dug. Which hole is it? He says, the hole is your father. Your father Abraham is the whole. It says so. It says, learn from the every found it. Mm, 51. That, right. It's what, what Isaiah? 51. 51. Verse 1. Verse 1. Listen to what God says. Right? Hearken to me. Hearken to me. Ye that follow Those after righteousness. Who follow Elijah. Hmm. After righteousness. Elijah brings righteousness. Mm hmm. Ye that seek the Lord, you look, are seeking the Lord. Yeah. Look unto the rock whence ye were hewn. Look unto the rock where you were hewn. And to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. To the hole of the pit where you are dug. Have you seen mud coming from a pit? Different from the pit? From the mud which is in the pit? No way. God is saying, Abraham, listen to the, the, the hole. Which is the hole? Listen. And to the hole of the pit whence ye are dug. Right. Look unto Abraham, right. your father, right. and unto Sarah that bear you. Right. He's telling you clearly where your rock is. Clearly where your, 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 your hole is. And where your rock is. And he says, it's Abraham. What shall we look at Abraham about? He kept God's charge. Hmm. He kept God's way. He kept God's covenant. Genesis 26, verse 5 to 6, tells you clearly he kept the commandments, the statutes, and all the laws which come from outside that. That's why in the last day before the great and dreadful day, yeah. most people don't know which one, which day Malachi is referring to. When they say the great and dreadful day, I don't know which one they are pointing to. 
But when Christ came the first time, it was not a great and dreadful death. He came like a humble step to be lay, slain on the cross. But this time when he's coming, he is coming in a great and dreadful day. But what is he dreadful for? For those who have not kept the charge of God. So that's why he is giving a message of warning through Elijah the prophet before he comes. Because when he goes, he's going to judge people, he will use the same law. It will be dreadful to those who don't follow it. It will be great to those who follow it. Now, when we are talking about the covenant, we are told here that Abraham, um, um, let's see what God had pledged. He had pledged to Noah that he will never destroy the earth again. Why? Because he made a way to rescue the family of the earth. Which way? By choosing Abraham. By choosing this descendant of Abraham and then taking that descendant out of Egypt to reestablish them on the cross, I mean on, on, on Canaan. So when they were reestablished on Canaan, we see them being driven out to, 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 to Babylon. Why? Because they did not walk in the covenant. The covenant law should not be broken. So when they don't, when they don't keep the statutes, when they did not keep the statutes, the festival, the, we find that admonition in Ezekiel chapter 20. It's clear they did not keep it. That's why God sent them to Babylon. So when God is saying, keep the statutes, and you refuse, and you don't even include it in your church manuals, in what God told, t tells us that we are now Babylon. Mm. That like what happened to the Israelites? They are the one who carried the name Babylon at that time when they were in Babylon. That they were the one. They are the ones who became Babylonian. The same people who were Israelites became Babylonian. I can see people, it's, their object will never be Babylon. It will. It will if it does not keep the statutes. It's only the commandments only and the testimonies. But if you want the church not to be Babylon, it should be like what it was with Abraham's friend. Abraham, God's friend, which is Abraham, Abraham kept the charge. When you keep the charge, it's the commandment, the statutes, which are the festivals, the, all the laws that came from Mount Sinai. Then you become God's friend. Then you are able to break and say, the church will never be Babylon. But if the church refuses the festivals, as it was with Abraham, it becomes Babylon. I'm afraid. It is. Yes, it is. At the end, it says so. It becomes Babylon. Let's go to the text which uh, which shows it becomes Babylon. In GC, Great Controversy, page 390, it becomes Babylon. It becomes Babylon. Without these followers, it becomes Babylon. Go to Great Controversy, uh, page 390. Where it, we have seen Revelation 18 pronouncing that fallen, fallen Babylon. So which one is Revelation 18 pertaining to? We will see that answer. In Great Controversy, page 390. Let's hear it. Revelation 18. Revelation 18 uh -huh. points to the time when as the result of the rejecting of the threefold warning of Revelation 14, verse 6 to 12, right. the church will have fully reached the condition foretold by the second angel right. and the people of God still in Babylon Will be called upon to separate from our communion. Right. So after the threefold warnings, which is first angel's message, second angel's message, third angel's message, then after that warning of three, when the church now enters into a period called Babylon, and the people will be called out. They like it or not, they'll be called out of Babylon. Come out of here, my people. It's a warning in great controversy. They will be called out. 
of Babylon. Why? If they reject the festivals, they have rejected the covenant. The second covenant has got the law. I can see people enjoying saying the second covenant has got the same law. What was the first law? It was not only commandments. It was the commandment and statutes, which are the festivals, and the judgments, and the testimonies. Those were in the first covenant. So God is trying to reestablish this first covenant to the second covenant. Same law. And if we say, now we are in the second covenant, without the statutes, without the judgments, which Elijah, the prophet of the hour, has been raised to make sure all those who are going to be sealed should have them. Why should there be a sealing process? It's because the church refused all the covenant laws. That's why God now emanates with somebody completely different from those trained in the institutions. Someone who does not have theology to introduce God's covenant to the people. Whether they forbear, or they will refuse, or they will whatever. But it is the gospel of the kingdom. That's the covenant. That's the last covenant, which is the second covenant. It comes as the gospel of the kingdom to the people. Or it comes as the sinning process. It's called the covenant law. So once we reject the seals, then God comes up with the one for 4,000, one by one from the church. This is what is happening. Everyone should know what is happening. Everyone has a right to know what is happening between God and the people. And judgment begins in the house of God. So when God is sending us as a people, Sending Elijah, the prophet, as a person, as a prophet, it is prophecy. Prophecy should be fulfilled. Sister White says so in 475 Testament to Minister. Prophecy should be fulfilled. When Elijah is raised, that Elijah, let's, let's go to the, that, that Testament to Ministers, page 475. She clears, she clearly says this message will come within somebody who is not taught from the literal institutions. Mm. Lest you might, there's no test. It should be a test. Listen to what she says. Yeah. Let heaven guide. Let heaven guide. Prophecy must be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, mm -hmm. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet right? before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Somebody mm -hmm. is to come mm -hmm. in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. She saw somebody coming. Yes. Future to her. And then you hear that there is no prophet of the hour. That's the greatest lie of the, of the generation, mm -hmm. of the history. The greatest lie is to tell you that there is no prophet. So she saw somebody coming with that message. Listen to that. Uh -huh. And when he appears. And when that person appears. Men may say. Men will. What do the men say? Yeah? You are too earnest. Right? You do not interpret the scriptures in the proper way. Now, that person is an interpreter. Yeah. He's a prophet. Mm -hmm. And there are people who are trying to interpret the scriptures using theology. They are the ones who say you don't interpret the scriptures correctly. And they bring also their own interpretations. Why? If the person was... If Elijah was coming through theology, no theologian would argue. But he's not coming through theology. That's why they argue. Mm. Because they have learned, they've gone also to learn theology, which is, we studied theology, it was a human speculation. It is human speculation. Of using big words. But Elijah comes without these big, big words. To tell us to keep the statutes, the four laws, together with the commandments, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. To make us become God's friends like Abraham. 
to make us receive the new covenant which is similar to the old except that the law is now implanted in the heart instead of in the table of stones. Hmm. So it's not only the, if you found the first covenant with the, the Ten Commandments only, then we could say, yes, let's only stick to the Ten Commandments. But the first covenant has got the, the Ten Commandments, the statutes, the judgments, the testimonies. So the new covenant also has the same law. The law is written in the heart, as Hebrews says. Hebrews chapter 8 says, the same law will be written in the heart. So if someone comes to take the laws which are in the cup and nails them to the cross, you know for sure it's not in the second covenant. You know for sure it's a sheep, it's a, a, a wolf in sheep clothing. It's going to deceive you. Because the covenant should be the same, the first and the second, except that the laws of the second are implanted in the heart. But the laws are still the same. The commandments, the ten commandments are still the same. The festivals are still the same, the statutes. And all the laws which were given to Moses on Mount Sinai in Nehemiah chapter 9, still the same. Hebrews chapter 8 says so. I will put the laws in the heart. Same. There's nothing taken off. And also, the second covenant we have seen coming with Elijah the prophet. Still, the second covenant has a prophet. The first covenant had a prophet. The second had a prophet. There is no covenant which dangles in the air like a, like a plane. Even when the plane is in the air, it's not dangling. It's following a radar. It's got machines that keep the, the air, aeroplane hanging there. God has given us the covenant. He's got machines making sure we don't break the Ten Commandments. Yeah. The statutes, the precepts which are given to guard the Decalogue. Hmm. These are the laws coming from God to humankind for you and I to be God's friend. Like it was Abraham was God's friend. Do you understand that? Now, we are told here that the covenant came now to Abraham. Um, let's go to the next paragraph, which, which says, uh, God remembered, and then now he says, but he must do something to save uh, this one faithful family from ruin. This is how he brought about Abraham. Abraham became the third grandfather. That's what we saw on Sabbath. Yeah. That Abraham became the third grandfather. Which one? The first grandfather? Adam. Adam. Second, Noah. Noah. Third, Abraham. Yeah. These are God's friends. They were keeping the statutes. They were keeping the commandments. We have proved from Genesis chapter 26, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Abraham was keeping the statutes, the commandments, all of them. You can't be God's friend with the Ten Commandments only. No, not at all. There is no one who has God's friend with only one law. For whoever gave the Ten Commandments gave also the statutes. Now, if you don't keep the statutes, you are a lawbreaker. If you break one of them, you break all. That's the simple, simple uh, principle of keeping the laws. If you break one, yes, you know with the Ten Commandments, if James will tell you, James chapter 2, verse 10, if you break one, you break all. And it means if you break one type of law, you break all. Simple. So once you want to worship God, worship as Abraham did to become God's friend. Now let's go to the coming. He gave up the rest. The next one. Mm -hmm. He gave up the rest of mankind mm -hmm. to idolatry mm -hmm. and atheism, mm -hmm. not because he was willing that they should perish, mm -hmm. but because they would not hearken to his voice. Why did he not choose anybody else? Why did he choose Abraham? He adopted Abraham. He adopted 
Noah, he adopted all these human families who were righteous. And he says the reason why he did it. And we so saw the reason with Abraham. He adopted Abraham because he knew he was going to command his children. He had that capability. Mm. And then he gave him all this covenant. He knew he is a staunch somebody who will stick to God's law. And he said, this is my friend. He tried him left, right, and center. He was staunch, pious man. Why did he not choose anybody else there? We saw even Noah came up with three children, Shem, Am, Japheth. Why Ham is, the, is where Abraham came from? What about Japheth? Did he not have children? Mm. Shem, did he not have children? Why didn't he go there? We are told by J.N. Andrews, Elder J.N. Andrews on this book, that he gave up the rest of mankind to idolatry and atheism, not because he was willing that they should perish. No. But because they would not hearken to his voice. He was trying, trying them, even before they knew the law of God. He was trying them in some of the things in the house. You know, because he says those people who are righteous, they are always true to, to principle. Yeah. Their principles, even when they are not worshipping, they are true. Sister White says, those who honor God, even when you find them in secular life, they are true to, to principle. Is it true? Yeah. Which principle? Yeah. If somebody borrows money from someone and say, I'll definitely bring it on Friday. Yeah. He's got to maintain the principle. Mm -hmm. And then on Friday, you don't see any even switches off the phone. It's not true to principle. That's nothing to do with religion. But it's a principle in your life. How you deal with other people. How you deal with life's principles. Yeah. God was checking even to those who are heathens. He checks for principles like that. And sometimes he comes up with somebody completely new in religious life. But God saw he is up to date with principles. Mm. I've seen a lot of people who don't worship God, who are true to principle. And you wonder who they obey. They obey a principle in their heart. That's what Abraham was. That's what people were around before they knew God. They were not true to principle. He only found Abraham one. Yeah. You break and say, all these people here are holy. We are all the same. People are not the same. Even those who worship God, they're not the same. There are some who are up to date with principles, but they don't even know God. They are up to date. When God wants servants, he just puts his spirit in that person who did not even know God. And he starts worshiping God in accordance because he is chosen because of principles that he chooses. I've seen a lot of people, even those who we call heathen, who are up to date with principles, who, who even children honor their parents, not, not that they are worshippers only, but because there is a principle. They don't even know the Ten Commandments. But they salute their parents, they reverence their parents, they do all. This is a principle. There are some people who even worship God, who do not even honor their parents. So God can compare you with a heathen, who you point your finger and say it's a heathen, and find him better off than you, better off. He can do that. He's got a lot. He's the creator, the whole, whole universe, mind you. So there's no way you should act as if you are high-minded and thinking that you, no one else can be chosen. God has plenty. It's the true. world is full of his creation. Full. Yeah. He has got even the worst, better people. The best people on earth. We have not known him. Once they know him, they will surpass those we have years 
read the Bible. Yes, going to church. Yes, thought they are the only ones. They will surpass them. You, the, you cannot understand the people who God created. How high their priorities could be. You can't comprehend. Hmm. It's God alone. So let's be very, very careful when the privilege comes to us. It comes only, it's a privilege. And we slight it, we lose it. We lose it. And it's very easy to lose it. They lost it. They rejected Christ and lost the privilege of being God's people. And God comes up with the fresh people who he adopts and gives the name Israel, spiritual Israel. And when the Spirit of God goes into their heart, they keep all the statutes, all the commandments, all the laws, as if, you know, they are so, you know, God is say, it says in, Patriots and, in Prophets and Kings, he has never stayed in any generation without those who are loyal to him, who take his interests their own. Hmm. He says so. Yeah. So never ever find time to break and say, I, 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 you go. That famous I will cause you to tumble down. Hmm. Now here he's saying, he gave up the rest because he saw their hearts. He only found Abraham and said, this is the one. I'll pick this one from the heir of the children, put him into Canaan. Now, read on this here. Mm -hmm. Yet, mm -hmm. though he... Though he thus adopted this one family, mm -hmm. he did not so reject the rest of mankind mm -hmm. that he did not make provision for any of them to be received among the Hebrew people if they would become circumcised and unite with the Hebrews in the service and worship. Now, he made sure he makes a distinct distinction or a mark yeah. between those who chose him and those who didn't. We see the mark in Genesis chapter 17. Go to 17. He made sure Abraham is circumcised and all his children. And if you if you hear someone say, I'll never, I'll never be circumcised, don't worry about that person. He's not in the chosen ones. If he's chosen, you will obey the covenant laws. It's not only the covenant of the commandments and the statutes and the judgments that he made. Mm -hmm. He has also the covenant laws. Listen to them. They are in Genesis 17. Let's hear that. Verse 10. Yeah, start from verse 3. Mm -hmm. verse 10. And Abram mm -hmm. fell on his face and God talked with him saying. So when he went now to Abraham, he wants now to make a distinction mm -hmm. between those who worship him and those who don't. So, by adoption, he adopted him and became a friend. He hasn't become Israel yet. He is a friend. Now he's adopting. Listen to, let's start from verse 1. We want to enjoy, we don't want to Why do we avoid other verses? Now, adopting this one and only, what did he do? Listen to that. Mm -hmm. And when Abram was 90 years, he was 90 years. 90 years old and nine. Mm -hmm. The Lord appeared to Abram and mm -hmm. said unto him, mm -hmm. I am the almighty God. Mm -hmm. Walk before me mm -hmm. and he and, and be thou perfect. Right. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. Mm -hmm. And I will multiply thee exceedingly. Mm -hmm. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, Behold, my covenant is with thee. Right. And so he is now bringing this covenant to Abraham. Mm -hmm. So when he approaches him, he was 90 years. 99. So you say 99. Mm. So before 99 years, he had no covenant. <laughs> he's been called. Look at how he's called. He's now saying, you are the covenant bearer. The covenant comes with one person. <laughs> If you find it being written in policies and procedures, you will find who is the author of those that book writing those policies. We should seize that person as Abraham who has been called these days. 
He called this family the family of Abraham. And he's calling it, and he gives all the covenant laws. Right? This is how he gave it to Abraham. And we want to find out whether that covenant is still in the second one. We saw the covenant of the law. It's still the second one. But we want to see this covenant now, which are in, in Genesis chapter 17, are they continuing in the New Testament, in the new, new covenant as well? For some people might think they are in the new covenant, and they are not. They are not. Now, listen to what he says. Now, he's, he wants him to be with all the covenant. Listen to that. <laughs> As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, right. and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Right. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, right. but thy name shall be Abraham. <laughs> for a father of many nations have I made thee. He starts by changing his name to Abraham. Because now he's a father of many nations. Many. Even your nation. There's a child of Abraham there. Hmm. Every nation should have a child of Abraham. And that child of Abraham should keep the covenant laws. Right? Listen to the covenant. This year. Mm -hmm. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Mm -hmm. And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Even the kings. There are kings who come directly from Abraham. Ab Abraham's descendants. Right? How? By adoption. We have seen how they adopted. If you are Abraham's seed, if you are Christians, in Galatians 3 verse 29, ye are Abraham's seed. Heirs according to the promise. promise. Now he's adopting us to be Abraham's seed. Right? Listen to that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I will establish my covenant between me mm -hmm. and thee, and mm -hmm. thy seed after thee mm -hmm. in their generations, for an everlasting covenant, right. to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Mm -hmm. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Listen to the covenant. The what? land. The land. Wherein thou art a stranger. The land of Canaan. All the land of Canaan. All the land of Canaan. For an everlasting possession. He hasn't called it Israel. No. Yet. It's called Canaan. And I will be their God. Right. And God said unto Abraham. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be, thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, mm -hmm. thou and thy seed you after thee, your seed. in their generation. In their generation. This is my covenant. What is the covenant? Which ye shall keep mm -hmm. between me and you, mm -hmm. and thy seed after thee. Mm -hmm. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. That's why we have this name. Throughout the whole world, is there? It's known. If you say circumcision, they know. They know exactly. What you're talking about, Abraham's seed in all their generations. If you say they have been nullified, show us where. And I'll show you how it continues in the New Testament. Now, read on. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, mm -hmm. and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Now, who told God where to circumcise? Believe me, he could have circumcised anyway. But he came up with where to circumcise. Yeah. Nobody told God. He came up with a suggestion. And he gave it as a law. But if I want to see who is Abraham's seed, that is it. Right? Now, listen to that next. <laughs> And he that is eight days old right. shall be circumcised among you. Who gave God the days eight? Do you know a child who is circumcised at eight days old does not feel all that pain because the nerves have not been formed to the foreskin. Circumcised quietly, nothing, nothing. You suffer when you circumcise when you are older than eight days because the nerves have developed. And it's supposed to punish you why you did not do it at eight days. That's a punishment. But even though it's better to
be circumcised and belong to the hall where we were dark, the rock where we are hewn, to the to to our father who was God's best friend, who kept the charge, and is called God's friend, than to be nothing. Better to be with him than to be nothing. Now read on this here. Mm -hmm. Another covenant. Uh -huh. So we saw the covenant one, the whole land of Israel, the covenant, the whole law, the four laws, the covenant, circumcision. It's all the covenant promises. That's why now when we go to uh, repeat Galatians chapter three verse twenty nine. When we go to Galatians chapter three verse twenty nine, that now pertains to us as Christians. Listen to that. Uh -huh. Galatians 3 verse 29. Yes. Uh -huh. And if ye be Christ, mm -hmm. then are ye Abraham's seed. Do you see that? And heirs according to the promise. Do you see that? Which which promise? The one that he promised. He took Abraham in that whole chapter. Read Genesis 17, you'll find. He took Abraham and said, Your children will be as many as the sand of the sea. And even kings, nations will come out of. Now the promise was for them to stay in the land of Canaan, hmm. as many as there. And we see that promise, he died before it was fulfilled. Because Hebrews chapter 11 will tell you that. Abraham did not see the promise. He died. He's still waiting for it. But when is the promise? You see the one for 4,000 first being sealed as 12 tribes of Israel, standing on Mount Zion with Christ as the Lamb. On the establishment of the kingdom there in Israel to fulfill the promise which was given to Abraham and that promise now how is it fulfilled we see now the one for four thousand being sent to the whole world to usher in the children of Abraham to the holy land Jerusalem we saw it in Isaiah chapter 66 Verse 18, these whole children now are going to be there. These are the children who keep the second covenant. Are they really going to be in Israel? Yes, let's, let's go. Isaiah 66, verse 18. 18. Yeah. For I know their works mm -hmm. and their thoughts. Mm -hmm. It shall come right? that I will gather all nations and tongues, mm -hmm. and they shall come and see my glory. Right, where? And I will set a sign among them. Right? And you I will see, the sign is being set. We are being sealed. The one for 4,000 are escaping the slaughter of Ezekiel 9. Listen to and that. And I will send those that mm -hmm. escape of them unto the nations. They escape the slaughter of Ezekiel 9. Yeah. To Tarshish. To Tarshish. Paul. Paul. And Lard, Lard. That draw the bow. You see, these are the countries with their original names mm -hmm. initially. They changed all the names. Now you can see even Good News Bible will tell you the proper names. How we know them now. But he will send the one for 4,000 back because they escaped the slaughter back to the countries. Listen to that. To pull, to pull blood. and lard yeah. that draw the bow. That draw the to Tabo, to Javan, and yeah. to the hours afar. Right. That have not heard of my fame, neither have seen my glory. Right. And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Do you see, now is the time when the covenant is now being spread right around the Gentiles. They, they, they tell those who have not seen him, because the one for 4,000 were standing with him on Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. They've seen him already. The kingdom has been established. And now they are going to show those who have not seen him. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. And they shall bring all your brethren right. for an offering unto the Lord right. out of all nations mm -hmm. upon horses right. and Look in the chariots. Transport. The transport has been given. And in chariots, chariots, and in liters, liters and upon mules, upon mules, and upon swift beasts, upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain Jerusalem. Where said the are Lord. they going? To the holy mountain Jerusalem. You see, they are now fulfilling the covenant promise to Abraham to fill the whole land of Canaan. When Christ is standing with the one for four thousand, sending them to take every gentile who wants to stand. 
by the covenant of the friend of God called Abraham. Hmm. Now, these are the new ones who are now in the new covenant. They are standing there. They are being brought as an offering to Jerusalem. Right? And what? Mm -hmm. S to my holy mountain, said the Lord, mm -hmm. as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. That's what we do. When we go to the house of the Lord, we bring an offering. Yeah. We bring even tithes. We, we bring all that to the holy mountain. What are we preaching? That this is what the one for, the, one for four thousand will bring all the brethren in front of God. That's what we see them uh, in Matthew chapter 25. We see them now gathered in front of Christ. Hmm. Who is ushering them into the kingdom. Go to Matthew chapter, 20, chapter 25, verse 31. You see how now Christ is in front. Because we saw Christ standing with the one for four thousand on the holy land. In Mount Zion. Giving them orders to go and collect all the Gentiles to bring them to the holy mountain Jerusalem. And then there in Matthew chapter 25, he now is seeing all those who have been brought. Listen to that. When the Son of Man mm -hmm. shall come in his glory right. and the holy angels with him, mm -hmm. then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. So he is sitting on the throne there. Right? Mm -hmm. And before him before shall him. be gathered all nations, right? and he shall separate so them nations, one from who, another. Who brought them? It's one for four thousand. Yes. Those that is kept have brought all nations in front of the Son of Man. It's the time of the kingdom. So those who have put on have the covenant, that's why we see them daydreaming about hoping in the cloud before this event. They daydream. One day are rejecting the covenant, and then they start daydreaming of going to heaven. We receive the covenant, and we see how the covenant is going to be received by the people. All the Gentiles are going to receive it. When it starts first with the one for 4,000 receiving it, they stand on Mount Zion with Christ, and they are sent to collect all the brethren of the Gentiles. Who come now, they are in front of Christ. Listen to what happens. <laughs> And before him mm -hmm. shall be gathered all nations, all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. Do you see that? As a sheep divideth his sheep so from the goat. As a shepherd. So he's separating those who have received the covenant in the heart to the right, which are called sheep. Those who did not receive the covenant, who only came because others are going, are driven to the, to the left. Listen to what he does to those on the, on the right. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, mm -hmm. but the goats on the left. Mm -hmm. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, right. Come, Come, ye blessed of my father, mm -hmm. inherit the kingdom you prepared see, for saying, you from the... Inherit the what? The kingdom. Do you see he's talking, he's talking to people who are saved, who have received the new covenant from the Gentile world. After the one for four thousand have collected them, he says to them, Inherit the covenant, the kingdom in Jerusalem, where they have been sent by the one for four thousand, where he is standing on Mount Zion. He says, Enter the kingdom. He's not yet saying, Enter heaven. No, enter the kingdom. And then those on the left, listen to those on the left. Just continue where you are reading. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then shall the king mm -hmm. say unto them on his right, mm -hmm. Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Right. For I was enhungered, mm -hmm. and ye gave me meat. Mm -hmm. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. Now, those who are saying, once I have become a Christian, I'm already in the kingdom. Do you say that there is a visible kingdom which these ones on the right are going to inherit at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? They are now called to inherit the visible kingdom. Mm. For he said the reason why he saw them doing all these good works before the covenant came with the one for 4,000 to them. 
They qualified like Abraham qualified when he was still in the air of the Chaldeans. He was true to principle. There are people who were told by Christ at that time, I was hungry, you did this. Do you see all these people who are doing charitable organizations and everything? Some of them don't worship, some of them. But they are doing a good work, and God is recognizing the work. This is what he's saying there. So they qualified when before they, any religion came to them, or before any of these four laws came, or the covenant came to them, they qualified because of the principles that they have. You find a disaster anyway. They've already gone. They've already gone to help, to serve humanity. Humanitarian. You know, institutions. They come up with them to save a human being. God recognizes that. Even before the followers came to them, he was recognizing people who are true to principle. Who saw somebody hungry and they gave bread? Who saw somebody thirsty and gave drink? Who saw somebody in prison and visited? Don't say they are wasting their time visiting people who are, who are criminals. No, they are doing a job which God is acknowledging. Yes. Read on this here. Mm -hmm. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. Then he is going to those who did not qualify to enter into the kingdom, who he called gods. Right? Let's hear. Depart from me. You go. You cursed. Amongst them, there are many Christians there. Mm. They did not receive the four laws. Depart. Depart from me. Depart. Ye cursed. Yes. Into everlasting fire. That's why I mean, in chapter 7 we say, some will say, well, I, 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 I did this demons. in your name, I did that in your name. Why? They did not qualify in the covenant. Hmm. They did not receive the covenant. So they were doing so much works. You know, Matthew chapter, chapter 7, verse 21, go to it. It's very brutal, that verse. This, that verse is a brutal verse. Right? When we discuss present truth, we discuss the whole Bible as it is. The whole Bible and clear and simplify it for the people to understand it. In the road to us heading to the kingdom, we should be studying all this, enjoying and getting the sale. All truth. What is the sale? All truth so that nobody can move you, so that you can't be moved. Read, read Matthew chapter 7. It's a bro you want to hear a brutal, a brutal verse? Go to Matthew 7, verse 21. It's very brutal. Not, yeah. not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, mm -hmm. shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Did you hear that? So it's very careful. We, it's very dangerous to, to assume the name of God and not follow accordingly what he wants you to do. Very, very dangerous game. Because you might waste your time saying, Lord, 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 when the covenant comes and you reject it, you're saying, Lord, Lord, for nothing. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter that kingdom that he said, because we saw they are gods. They are sheep. Sheep were told, I was hungry. You did qualify. I was thirsty. You did qualify. All the acts of mercy, you did qualify. You go. There are people who were having those acts of mercy in the left, but they did not get the chance to be in the kingdom. Why? Because they were just concentrating on, on the works without the faith. The faith comes with the covenant. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. Not everyone mm -hmm. that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, mm -hmm. shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, mm -hmm. many will say to me so in that day. So today we know what is called will of the Father through Abraham, God's friend. What is the will of the Father? Abraham kept my charge. Mm -hmm. The commandments, the statutes, the judgments, the testimonies. Now he's telling this on the right. Go in. You did qualify. You had this act of mercy, but they also received the covenant. New covenant he wrote in their heart. A new covenant I will give. 
He, the new covenant, which is given, let's see, where is, is it given? Not when we are outside, outside the kingdom. It's given when they come with the 144,000. I want to tell you, just jump from there, we'll come back to them. Go to Ezekiel chapter 36. We want to see how the new covenant is given. Uh, it's another one. When they are collected, chapter 36, verse Go to verse 17 or 18, start there. Mm -hmm. Want to see when they are collected from the nations and then brought to Jerusalem. How then do they come to the new covenant? Listen to it. Uh -huh. Son of man, mm -hmm. when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, mm -hmm. they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Mm -hmm. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. That's why when you are not keeping those covenants, that's how he describes what you are doing. Uh -huh. Wherefore, mm -hmm. I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land mm -hmm. and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. Mm -hmm. And I scattered them among the heathen so and they were they dispersed. Right they are scattered. Among the heathen. But when they come, they become spiritual Israel. Mm -hmm. Where do we find, first find them? We find the 12 tribes. We are sealed first in Laodicea. The one for 4,000. There are now 12 tribes of Israel. One for 4,000 coming. They are sealed first. Why? Because they are sealed as servants. Revelation 7. Seal the servants. And then when they are now standing with Christ on Mount Zion, the one for 4,000, is now on the day of Pentecost giving them marching orders to go and gather all the Gentiles. We saw it in Isaiah 66. Now, Ezekiel 36 is saying the same thing. Listen to that. <laughs> and I scattered them among the heathen, and so they were dispersed. There. So when the time came, when Christ came the first time, Israel was not there. Israel was ten tribes. Mm. There was only two tribes of Judah. Israel was not there. Until today, scattered all over. That's why when God is saying three times a year, he's commanding them to go three times a year to Jerusalem. And all the spiritual Israel are being commanded to go three times a year to worship God. And he captures them that way. That's why when we find in Zechariah chapter 14, we will find that in verse 16, all of them who did not go there, he says there is no rain. No later end. They did not go to keep the last feast, which was the feast of tabernacles. Hmm. There. He says there's no rain. Because he did not capture them. Only captured those who he gave the later rain. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16 up to, because of time, I'm just giving you to read for yourself. But now he's saying, Ezekiel 36, verse, he says, when they rain there, he scattered them because they did not keep the covenant. Once you don't keep the covenant, you, you cease to be God's friend. Abraham was God's friend, he was keeping the covenant. Now, read on this here. Mm -hmm. And when they entered unto the heathen, right? whither they went, right? they profaned my because holy he name. Not to keep, to keep the covenant. Mm -hmm. When they said to them, mm -hmm. These are the people of the Lord, mm -hmm. and are gone forth out of his land. Right. But I had pity for my holy name. So when they are found in, in the Christian churches and everywhere in Laodicea, they are not keeping festivals. It's still the same. God is saying, No, they should start keeping the covenant. Now, listen to that. Uh -huh. But I had pity for my holy name, right. which the house of Israel had profaned. But Among God still wants that peculiar people. But he is now going to adopt a people who qualify for the new covenant. This is what he's going to do. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. They profaned among the heathen mm -hmm. whither they went. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mm -hmm. say unto the house of Israel, right. Thus saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. I do not this for your sakes, mm -hmm. O house of Israel, right. but for mine holy name's sake, right. which ye have profaned among the heathen, but with the holy we went. name should be maintained, which is Israel. Yeah. It should be someone has to be adopted 
for that holy name's sake. Mm. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. And I will sanctify mm -hmm. my great name. Right. Which was profaned among the heathen. Right. Which he have profaned in the it midst of them. It should be known for keeping the covenant, mm -hmm. that name. Right? Mm -hmm. And the heathen mm -hmm. shall know that I am he the Lord. He will do it before earth comes to the probation, closes probation, because the heathen, even when they are there, they should know that that name is back to square one. Mm -hmm. Right? Say the Lord. Repeat God. that one. Even the... Mm -hmm. And I will sanctify my great name. The great name will be there because he will adopt others and give the name Israel like he did to Jacob. Which was profaned among the heathen. That name had been profaned because they were not keeping the covenant. Which ye are profaned in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the heathen shall know that I am the Lord. Do you see that the heathen will still be there? Mm -hmm. Because when we go to heaven... Yeah, they are not there. And here the heathen are still there. They should also testify to say, we saw, what is a heathen? Someone who does not believe. Someone who does not believe is a heathen. So they should also know that God's name is back. What does that name mean? It means the four laws in the covenant. So if you say, uh, this ship will never sink, you are right. It won't sink. It will, it will, it will remain with the, the 144,000 and those who are in the covenant of the followers. It's not sinking. That's what it means. This ship will never sink. It does not mean that anyone without the followers it does not sink. That one sinks. That person sinks. When you say church, we mean people. The people with the four laws won't sink. Mm. We mean people. The church is not a building. Church is a people with the one for four thousand with the four laws. The one for four thousand are the people who don't sink. We see them. The rest will sink with Ezekiel nine. Now this year, it's there. Ezekiel chapter nine. Read it for yourself. People are sinking there, sinking, sinking. It says he commissions on those six angels there. Slay utter like he did the firstborns when they were going out of Egypt. They were sinking the firstborns there. So he says, start with them in front of the altar. They were sinking that ship, sinking that one. But the one that does not sink is the one for 4,000. Because they have the covenant. They are under the four laws. And that's why God is there saying, now I will sanctify my name in those people. Read on this year. Mm -hmm. And even the heathen will see that the, sea, the ship never sank. It is one for four thousand with the covenant. That's the ship. And what? Mm -hmm. For I will take you mm -hmm. from among the heathen. I will take from among the heathen. That's, you see that ship? It's not sinking. It's mm -hmm. being taken. Uh -huh. And gather you out of all the countries. They, they start with the one for four thousand gathering way. And then what? Mm -hmm. And will bring you into your own land. That's the land of Canaan. They will be brought back where Abraham was taken and, and sent. Now to fulfill the promises he gave to Abraham. And what? Mm -hmm. then, then will I sprinkle clean then water upon you. Then later on will be sprinkled to the 144,000 on the day of Pentecost. And ye shall be clean. And then they are clean. From all your filthiness. And then what? And from all your idols and, will and I cleanse what? you. And what? And a new heart then the also covenant. will I give you. Right, listen to that. And a new spirit will I put Do within you. see you. the new covenant? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, and I will take away the stony the heart. The stony heart which was in the covenant, in the old covenant, because it was not in the heart. Out mm -hmm. of your flesh. Out of your flesh. And I will give you. And heart of flesh. Now the heart of flesh has got all the four laws. After the lettering. Mm. And. And I will put my spirit within you. Then the spirit of God thrives with men. And cause you to walk in my statutes. Then all those festivals that you are not keeping. He now causes you to walk on the festivals. And ye shall keep my judgments. You will keep even the, the statutes and judgment which Elijah was preaching. And do them. And do them. You are now Abraham, Abraham's descendants. Uh -huh. 
and ye shall dwell in the land. And that time in the kingdom we are now dwelling in the land that I gave to your fathers. That was given to Abraham and promised in Genesis chapter 17. And ye shall be my people. And now you are God's people because Abraham was promised. And I will give and I'll be your God. And God will be your God. And what else? I will also save you from all your uncleanness. All the uncleanness or all the diseases that we have. All these diseases. He will save us when we have the covenant promises. And I will call for the and I will call for the corn and will increase it and mm. lay no famine upon you. You see, they are even plowing in the new kingdom. Mm. They are planting. The corn is coming in the kingdom. This is way before we go to heaven. The kingdom, that's the people now dwelling in the kingdom. Listen to that. And I will multiply the fruit of right? the tree. And even the fruit of the tree. And the increase of the field. Because everything, the, plow, the one who is plowing is a covenant is a covenant keeper. God has to bless even whatever he touches. Mm -hmm. And the, and increase the field mm -hmm. that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. No famine anymore. It means there was a possibility to have famine, but there's no more famine. Why? Because you are a covenant bearer. Hmm. Do you understand? When, when we're talking about the covenant, we're talking about something really serious in the plan of salvation. And you and I cannot afford to miss the covenant. Now here we are being told, just finish that paragraph that you were, you were reading, Dave. It says, now yet though he has adopted this family, the family of Abraham, this is what happened. Listen to that. When you were telling, he gave up the rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he gave up the rest. Right. He gave up the rest of mankind mm -hmm. to idolatry and atheism, mm -hmm. not because he was willing that they should perish, mm -hmm. but because they would not hearken to his voice. Yet, though he thus adopted this one family, mm -hmm. he did not so reject the rest of mankind mm -hmm. that he did not make provision for any of them to receive among the Hebrew people if they would become circumcised and mm -hmm. unite with the Hebrews in his service and worship. Mm -hmm. The adoption was just and the right. The adoption of this family of Abraham was just and what? And right and, right and necessary. And necessary. But was, it, was it necessary? Yes. To reignite the world after the, the flood so that there are people who serve him. It was necessary. And what? By means of it, mm -hmm. God preserved his knowledge and his worship this is in the how earth. God preserved his knowledge by rescuing this family. The knowledge of God is not with multitudes of people. It's got a family in the time of Abraham, mm -hmm. a family in the time of Noah, a family in the time of Adam, and a family in our time. So never mind about the numbers. God will still have a family on earth in our time where the knowledge of God should be preserved. The knowledge of God does not mean need multitudes. God demonstrates with the family and those who join the family will be blessed. That's why Abraham was promised. Your seed will multiply. The whole earth will be full of his knowledge because you will start with a family and the family will multiply, and the family will disseminate the truth of what God wants, and those who join that family will be blessed, and those who run away from that family, like as it was with Abraham, those who were not there were not blessed. God will have a family on earth in the last time who is God's friend. May God bless the reading of his word.